Hello, everyone. Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th. Oh, what a day it is. I hope you can all hear me okay. I am, uh, I'm Jacob Israel. Welcome to the show. This is a last minute show, so I apologize. So I'll charge us. I'll just, uh, kind of talk for a little bit just to get some people in the room because I usually like to schedule these things still I'm still under the weather I'm happy that you're joining me Friday the 13th baby can you hear me okay in the chat room let's say hi to everybody loud and clear hey Jacob do I sound like a uh, robot I've learned that I should probably check because if the stream isn't good you know maybe I should just go somewhere else you know what I mean so that's uh that's that's what it is i got an ad sounds like okay good i guess i can go forward now welcome to the show everyone hi i'm glad you're here it's friday the 13th scary day right it's when uh all the uh, spooky monsters come out to play so they say i know the title was a bit a bit off putting fear god give glory to him the hour of his judgment has come it's gonna make sense by the end of the show, maybe I got a good half an hour here. I'm going to look at Revelation 14 as it's playing out in a way that I didn't expect. I didn't expect to be coming to you here so shortly, but I'm glad that I'm here now. I'm glad you're all here. After uh, my live stream, I think, what was it, yesterday, talking about this bizarre comment? If you haven't seen it, it's another interstellar visitor. What I found interesting was on the um, on the live stream, I said that I have people in Hawaii that watch the show, and I said maybe they can reach out to me. My buddy Ernie reached out to me. And um, the name, because I always thought that Umuamua meant messenger from afar arriving first, it's now scout in context to the first scout before a warring party, which I thought was interesting. It's interesting, right? Alien invasion and all that. Fox already put out some kind of thing about there being a solar sail and blah, blah, blah. I'm not really into it. What I am into is a couple of things that are going down. Dragonflies. Yeah, a little invasion. Interesting. It's going to make sense. Tonight's a harvest moon. Now, do you know what a harvest moon is? Okay, a harvest moon is the uh, first moon that happens be you know, right before the equinox. Now, you know that I've been talking a lot about September 23rd and the equinox and how this is kind of an important time. They got the climate summit going down right at the UN. They're going to uh, get the agreement. I'm going to put it in place. Make sure that you can all hear me. Can you hear me okay? Testing, testing, one, two, three. Look at this. I haven't done a live stream in a while. Now I'm done. Second one, second one, two days. Interesting. The micro moon, that's tonight. It's a harvest moon, Friday the 13th. So you have this harvest moon happening at the same time. Harvest moon, harvest moon is it's supposed to be the brightest moon. And it's supposed to make it easy for you to, you know, bring in the harvest. It gives you a little extra light. Problem is, this one's a micro moon. It's like the tiniest. It's the tiniest moon farthest away from the Earth. And um, I think that's pretty interesting. I think that is pretty fascinating. Is the music too loud in the chat, by the way? If it's a little too loud, it bothers me. I don't like I don't like that. Hi, Geraldine. Hello, Arcturus777. I'm so glad you all came. I'm really happy that you're here. Sandy uh, Hopkins in the house, Crystal Light in the house, Rob Gooch in the house, Buzz Beyond in the house, much love to you, my friend, Leslie, Mandela, IPA and Sunshine, everybody's here. The music's okay. I listen to it. I think the music's all right. I'm going to keep it at this level, if you're okay with that. The micro moon. So, okay, so when I'm seeing this, I'm thinking to myself, the moon is symbolic of our 
you know, our soulish life, our intellect, or our identity, who we think we are in the world. We're not the source of light. We are a reflection of it. Okay? You get what I'm saying? We're uh, an image of it. So you look at the moon, you think, oh, wow, look at that uh, big, big light bulb in the sky. Some people think it's a light bulb. That's cool. Wow, John Davids, we get $50. What are you doing? Thank you so much. It's very nice of you in the... Uh, the uh, super chat there. That's really nice. Hi, Trail Hunter and Miss Smart Pants. Mark Pants. Zach, everybody else, hi. Intellect of man. Farthest away from the earth. Micro moon. So I'm, I'm at a um, kind of a crossroads with this because I'm thinking to myself, what does it mean? You know, does this, is this symbol, is this a bad thing or is this a good thing? You know, if it's harvest time, you probably want the moon to be big and bright. You don't want it to be far, far away. Then I thought, well, maybe, maybe there's only a small, maybe there's only a remnant that are ready to be harvested. You get what I'm saying? Small amount, small number, remnant. So look at it makes sense. This is really cool. It's tied into this swarm of dragonflies that you're going to hear about soon. Showed up on the radar through over three states. And how this is tied into Ezekiel and Revelation chapter 14. It's just, it's uncanny because I, I, you know, when I was helping Noah get his tire fixed today, I didn't expect to do a show. But all these things kept popping out. And I kept thinking to myself, wow, Friday the 13th, everybody's going to be spooked out. I was just talking about lunacy just yesterday, not even thinking that there was this micro moon going down. So it's tiny. But on the flip side of the coin, the Earth, if that's the fake light, if that's the false light, this is the farthest away from the Earth. Say the Earth is our, some people say that the Earth is symbolic of our soul, that the Sun is symbolic of Christ, the Moon is symbolic of that carnal nature. Who knows? It's like it's all how you, you look at it, right? So every story can have a positive spin and a negative spin. So I'm like, which way do I go? Which way do I go on this? I don't know what I, I don't know what I should talk about. Because one of the things that I talk about on the channel a lot is the fact that if you have faith and if you're seeking more and that you're fearing God, and that word fear I'm going to get into, it's not what you think. It is a deep reverence, but it's also, it's, it's translated in a way, it's kind of like if, if a bird is meant to fly and it's not flying, you, know, you, you boop, <laughs> you scared a bird so it takes flight. It's kind of like this fear of the Lord. It's 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 a uh, it's a reverent fear. It is something that is going to smack us in our faces and get everybody to go. Oh Lord, help me! Okay, oh Lord, help me! Look at the the, the majesty of everything, and to understand that everything is working together for the good. So let me give you a little info about the moon. Okay, this micro moon. It is going down Friday the thirteenth. It's spooky enough. But hold on to your black cats. This is, uh, I, oh, I forget where I got this from. That's, that's a shame. I should have, um, I probably should have credited whatever article. I just pulled whatever. It's about 14% smaller and 30% dimmer than when it's at its closest point of the earth. So not so great to work in. You know what I mean? Not so great. Now there's a couple of interesting things about this, this moon. It is a full moon. Here we go, Fast Company saying, which is always good for covens and wear people. Very funny. Because it's a full moon, it is a full moon nearest the autumnal equinox, September 23rd. There's that date again. It's known as the harvest moon, and farmers need a little boost in the midst of the Trump trade war. I, I should have probably uh, prepped this a little more. It happens to fall on Friday the 13th, which makes it extra spooky. But wait, there's more. <laughs> okay. The full moon that will rise this evening is split among time zones. Now this is very significant. That means people who live in the Eastern time zone will be robbed. Robbed like a thief. Thief robs in the night saying and no I'm not saying what you think I'm saying but I'm just thinking that's you know gonna be robbed it just popped out it popped out sometimes I go with it you make what you're supposed to make out of that full moon that will rise this evening is split it means people in the eastern time zone that will be my time zone 
will be robbed of having the Friday 13th full moon because the moment the moon turns full will actually take place after midnight. Specifically at 12.33 a.m. on the 14th of Saturday. That is, you know, some hours from now. It's interesting. So it's really full moon's not taking place in the night, but in the morning. You get that? You get that? Do you, do you feel what I'm throwing down? You feel what I'm throwing down? Okay. A lot of stuff about two years ago, September 23rd. I, I keep hammering this home. I don't know why. I just feel, you know, it's the equinox. It's the, the world UN climate. It's all of these things coming together. It's been two years. It's like right after two years or right after two days. Very symbolic. You go into that third day. On the third day, Christ rises. So it's like I'm excited because I'm thinking, yes, maybe some fruit on that tree, if you know what I mean. Maybe some people, maybe it's a small, maybe there's a small harvest, but you're out there, right? You're out there and you're seeking more and you're living for more. And you're doing all sorts of good things. Doing things like lifting people up and giving them hope and you're not giving up. Somebody reached out to me. Oh, God, I forget people's um sometimes I forget their screen names a lot of people going through a lot of hard times and was meeting some with a, a friend who had just you know tried to end it all and uh, it was a miraculous event and he reached out to me and I think it was beekeeper I think that's his name are you in the chat are you there I think that's his name I know him by sight I know the uh it's interesting because I can't get away from bees. There are bees everywhere I go. They had, remember I had like a, I had a beehive in the back of my um, work. Bees swarming all over the place. I had a honeybee on my back door just crawling up this big honeybee. And I was like, I haven't seen a honeybee and I can't tell you how long. Thanks to Monsanto and other things. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, J uh, Jacob, for blessing my day with your live stream. You always lift my spirit. Catherine, well, good. Thank you. You lifted my spirit. It's a lot of money. It's $75 all of a sudden. You guys are just, you're just the best. You're just the best. I'm going to drink some tea for all of you. It's hard because my voice, it's, uh, sometimes it's a little more difficult with the, um, the allergies, the way they are. Okay, let's get back to, oh, Dark Side of the Moon has to pop in there. Thank you, Dark Side. <laughs> that was nice to see you too in Super Chat. So I've been very excited. I said possibility, pregnancy, but in the video I also said, you know, you got to, walk the run, you gotta run the, before you fly. Sometimes fear is what makes you take flight. Speaking of flying, there is a swarm of uh, dragonflies over three states. Dragonfly, I like dragonflies, okay? Um, hopefully you can't hear the workers that are outside blowing right now. It's always, uh, it's always a good time to do a <laughs> live stream and Suburbia, Long Island, 450. Guys are out there blowing leaves for hours. Dragonflies, I always thought were very... I like dragonflies. I've written poetry about dragonflies. I've written about poetry. Um, dragonflies, they have an interesting life. Okay? Now, there is a... Um, there's an invasion going down. And uh, it's pretty interesting. I don't know if you remember correctly. I talked to you just a little while ago about a ladybug swarm that was over it was big enough to show up on um weather radar that was in june did, did you all remember that ladybug swarm and i had said that it was like the uh, ladybugs ever used to show up all the time well you know there are these certain insects that, that just seem like there's a um you, you find like almost a spiritual connection to them because the symbolism of what kind of creature they are what kind of animal they are like the dragonfly, for example, how many wings it has, how many feet it has, that its head is basically all, all it, it just sees everything, how it flies and it, it's master flight and how it is like the predator of predators when it comes to insects. It just, it devours bugs. Such a hunter that it like 95% like just perfect accuracy. Doesn't miss, doesn't miss a kill. So of course I hear about this dragonfly uh, infestation this invasion where these dragonflies are just zoom, 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 
they're just flipping around and they're just they're just and it's a beautiful sight right and there's all these videos online I should probably um, should probably try to find one for you where everybody is just freaking out because they've never seen something like this never seen these dragonflies anybody in the chat hear about this Anybody, anybody hear about that? Travis Smith says 144,000. Interesting. Arcturus says locusts in Revelation. Interesting. Oh, I have such a cool group of people. Such, such a cool group of people. Such a crew. Just the best, coolest. And it was, I said cruel because one person was not nice in the chat. <laughs> That's okay, though. I won't boot you. I won't boot you. Dragonflies. So a lot of you know, people are, oh, people are saying they heard it from Richie from Boston. Oh, you know what? That's interesting. It's interesting because I saw a picture, I guess Richie had posted with like, and I said, and it was like, I was, I, I didn't um, get to watch the video. I clicked on it for a second. He started to talk. And then I just, I looked up Swarm. So it was actually, I can like credit R Richie for putting that um, thumbnail out because that's what got me. I just typed in insect swarm just to see what it was. And um, while well, I was waiting for lunch, and uh, and I came to the dragonfly, and then it just it's just made sense because when I when I saw the dragonfly, I thought immediately of, um, yeah. I mean, you look at that beautiful, you look at that beautiful insect, right? Do you know that like all their plates they reflect light in such a way? Let me let me give you some um, let me give you some of the things that you can tell about dragonflies, okay? They were some of the first winged insects to evolve, okay? So they say, I don't know, about 300 million years ago, but, you know, whatever. Some scientists theorize high oxygen levels. Okay, great. More than 5,000 known species. Very cool. And they're, Now, this is where I wanted to um, kind of focus on. Their larval stage, which can last up to two years. So, two years... They're in their larval stage. After two years, they start to transform. Dragonfly is always symbolic of like a uh, resurrection, a uh, renewal, a new day. Okay? Of course, you know, you can't help but think of the word dragon and you think of the fact that right now, oh, good grief, how many, how many people talking about dragons, right? <laughs> Let's see, SpaceX, that's going down right now. The uh, SpaceX test, its crew. The Dragon's escape system. Now, this is interesting. Because a while ago, I talked, maybe about a year ago, I talked about, remember when the, the uh, SpaceX Dragon docked in the heavens? Like right after this sign? And then it landed in Earth. And it was almost like, I'm like, oh my goodness! It's like Revelation is playing out. And I, like, I went through like a couple of weeks where it was just, there was dragons everywhere. It, like dragons were just like, everywhere and then game of thrones dragons right okay so this is interesting because here's the escape system the dragon's escape system do you get what i'm saying because you see the dragonfly i'm like okay lord what is it meant to be you know and i didn't know i didn't know vice versa and then my buddy ernie he texted me and um i said okay this guy he's a uh, he's a very he's a very faithful guy he like believes he has this uh, uncanny faith. So I said, he'll probably just rattle off some random things and it'll just make sense to me. And of course it did. Because I didn't I didn't have the um I didn't have the show. I didn't have it. I was missing a piece and I told him like, I'm missing a piece of the puzzle. And he uh, we're gonna get into that because it's interesting how it all ties together. And the timing of everything is just so beautiful. But the so I was going back and forth. Is it a bad thing? Oh no. Looks like my camera just went dead. Let's pull this over. Hopefully I'm still on. Let's take a look. My camera died for a second there. Looks like I froze. Can you still hear me okay? Am I still on? Ooh, that's interesting. That's interesting how this works. Uh, drag. Let's see if I'm still, uh, am I still going? Can you hear me okay? Okay, good. Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. That's cool. Very weird. I talk about the dragon's escape plan, and all of a sudden my computer dies. Very strange. The timing of all this. Let me get rid of that. Uh, let me get rid of that camera, and let me uh, try to replace it with a new one. So bizarre, right? Dragon's escape. 
in Revelation, there they see there's this talk, right? There's this talk. And if the Revelation 12 sign happened two years ago, two chapters later, we get to, what do we get to? Anybody remember? We get to uh, Revelation chapter 14, which, I think I got this back up and running again. Revelation chapter 14, which is pretty interesting because it is directly connected to Ezekiel's living creatures, which is directly connected to <laughs> this dragonfly and a conversation I have, which is also directly connected to an essay that I wrote many years ago, which I'm going to, um, which breaks down Revelation 14 in a way you haven't heard about the 144,000, that they have this new song that they sing, that they're playing these harps. It makes complete sense. You're going to be like, wow, finally, somebody breaks the bread for me so I can digest it. I'm trying to take this whole loaf in at once, and I just I need a little piece after piece, so I'm going to piece it together for you. So as these dragonflies are just wiping out these uh, insects, right? left, right, and sideways, like mastery, they've mastered flight. We see the uh, dragon's escape is uh, underway, right? Not just that, but you know what else is going on? Take a look at another dragon we know, known as Saturn. Hello, beautiful, September 12th. Yeah, the telescope. They are uh, revealing this gorgeous portrait of Saturn. You know, Saturn is very symbolic, represents the dragon, if you will. And of course, let's get back to, um, let me see, let me pull this up. Oh, they're also doing a reboot, by the way, of um, Game of Thrones. I don't know if you know that. That's That was um, in the news today. I thought that was pretty cool. And Telegraph, HBO to make a dragon-centric Game of Thrones prequel. So, um, before the Game of Thrones, it's like a prequel, which is interesting. We're going to go back to the beginning. The end is the beginning. The beginning is the end. Have you, uh, have you understood the beginning so much that you asked for the answer to the end? It's a great, uh, great text. If you ever come across that in the, uh, Nag Hammadi library. Okay. Let me just go back a little bit to these dragonflies one more time. I hope I haven't lost yet. They're expert flyers. They're great at catching their prey. Some adult dragonflies live a few w weeks while some live up to a year. Now, I told you their head, it's all eye. And a single dragonfly can eat up to like eat 30 to hundreds of mosquitoes per, per day. Hundreds of dragonflies from different... See, now, this is cool too, is that you don't have to be the same type of dragonfly. All the dragonflies, they're all different, but they fly with one accord. They swarm together. <laughs> does, that sound, does that sound cool to you? I think that sounds cool to me. I, like I said, I didn't know which way to go. I'm like, swarm of dragonflies, but I always liked the dragonfly. Every time I saw a dragonfly in my pool, I was like, oh, <laughs> I feel good about myself, you know? Scientists have tracked migratory dragonflies um, by putting little transistors on them. And there's a dragonfly called the globe skimmer, who uh, 11,000 miles back and forth around the globe. That's pretty interesting. Flight of the dragonfly, of course, engineers. I mean, like the helicopter and a lot of them. I mean, a lot of um, these are very amazing and fascinating creatures. And when you just look at them, you just look at them. And my goodness, they got legs. They got legs like hands. They got six legs. They got four wings. They got legs like hands. They can, they can, you know. And if you look at them, see, it's almost like a little, it's like a little, little uh, hoof, maybe. I don't know. Dragonflies. Some people um, compare them to horses, the appearance of horses, but they shimmer in the light, which is just so cool. Now, why is this of great importance to you? If any reason that you're watching the show, this program is going to reveal Revelation 14 to you. Whether or not all of this stuff that's going down right now means that Revelation 14 is literally happening now, I'd like to think that it is. I'd like to think so. I'd like to hear the uh, the joyful cry of hundreds, uh, over 100,000 people or more. I'd like to see the world change. But remember, in this point of story, chapter 14, 
it's right. It's this is the point of the story where people are saying, "What's the title of the show again?" Let me read this. This is the uh, there's like a there's like a messenger I think in the book of Revelation. What did I title this show again? Let's see. Fear God, and give glory to Him for His hour of judgment is at hand. That's the time we're in. It's time to fear God, right? It's time to fear God, but in a good way. Okay, so this is how I know that this is all a beautiful thing on Friday the the, uh, 13th. Um, Ernie calls me uh, up. He calls me, leaves a message, and um, I'm like, I was going to go live at like 3.30, so it's like 3.25, but I didn't have that other piece of the puzzle. So, uh, sometimes, you know, sometimes when Ernie gets on phone, he gets a little nervous to talk to me, which is pretty funny. I get a kick out of that. I love you, dude. Um, so check this out. So he tells me that right before I called, he was about to watch this. Now you got to understand something. At this point of the story for me during the day, I'm already in my head. I'm thinking about the 144,000. I'm thinking about that scene in Revelation 14. I'm thinking about those, um... The, the creatures that are talked about in Revelation as well. I'm thinking about all of this stuff because of the dragonflies and because of the uh, the micro moon. And I'm already thinking about, it, but I didn't know where to go. And I wanted to express, I wanted to give you guys some good news. I wanted to get you guys excited and gals to. Uh, I wanted to get you all fired up, like to give you a, a joyful song in your heart, right? And I was thinking. These 144,000, they play a um, they play a harp, right? So, or he tells me, he's, it's like I'm watching this. Uh, I started watching Kubo and the Two Strings, and he he was telling me all about this cartoon from I guess 2016. How um, you know he unlocks some kind of secret thing, and this is like a uh, I guess battle between good and evil. I haven't seen it. He has to battle. Oh wow! I didn't even get this. He has to battle the Moon King. Come on. He has to battle the Moon King. Right now, the moon's very far away. I didn't even put two and two together. That's very cool. That's very cool because we're talking. So you see how everything starts to kind of, I mean, maybe it's a leap. I don't know. But he has to battle the Moon King. And as I said, Earth could be symbolic of the heart of man, right? It's kind of like this us. We're the Earth, okay? Salt of the Earth, if you will. Sun, symbolic of the light of Christ, God's love, truth, the truth, spirit of God. Then the moon is fake. It's a false light. So if you got Christ on one side, you got the, the Christ, the giver of life. I'm not saying the moon. you should worship the moon or worship the sun, but I'm saying if the sun is symbolic of Christ, because he's called the sun, right? You got the moon, would be symb- it would be the false light. False light. The false light is now farthest away from the earth than it's ever been. But tiny micro moon for the harvest. So maybe it's time for a remnant to stand up. You know, maybe uh, maybe this is what's happening. Maybe we're uh, already, maybe it's already happening. Maybe it's going down, right? Maybe we're all part of that story. So he tells me about Kubo and the Two Strings. He battles the Moon King and other gods and monsters to save his family and solve the mystery of his fallen father. That would be like Adam. Adam would be the, uh, oh my goodness, so funny when I was talking to Ernie too. I go, oh my goodness, they're doing something with the Adams family. I said, is that a Mandela effect? Does it have two Ds? Adams family? They're redoing like the Adams family or something. I think on Netflix. I don't know. Spelled with two Ds and it looked just looked weird. Maybe that's the way it always was. But once again, the fallen father would be Adam. To redeem the fallen father would be Christ. <laughs> Put two and two together. This goofy little cartoon that he mentioned all of a sudden is kind of popping to life. I'm very excited. Uh, the greatest samurai warrior the world's ever seen. And he, he learns how to play these two strings. These two strings, I guess. And it's it's like a harp. So, of course, I'm thinking, wow, harp. And I go, is it like a harp or anything? He's like, I don't know. It's like a uh, it's like a this or a that. We're going to get into why the harp is important. Because that 144,000, they play the harp. Now, let's get to... Uh, so, I, I still don't get the clear answer. And I say to him, I say, oh, you got a Bible nearby? I do this sometimes. You know, um, so just open up to whatever. And he opens up. And what does he open up to? <laughs> and this is a true story. If he's in the chat, are you in the chat, yellow mongoose? Are you in there? You should tell everybody. What, what did I do when you mentioned Ezekiel 1? I freaked out. I was like, you got to be kidding me. I said, you got to be kidding me. It's just so, so strange. Because 
that's what I was talking about. Oh, wow. A lot of people donate some money there. Uh, Unveiled Optics. What are you doing? That's a lot. Thank you very much. And uh, Jessica Lizette, you, you love my hair. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I make it poofy. I like it. Um, hides if I'm, you know, thinning out on top. Thank you, Michael Willis Chase. And Amanda, thank you very much. Thank you all. That's so nice of you all. That's really, uh, it's above and beyond. It's above and beyond. So, I don't know. Ernie, if you're in there, Brother Yellow Mongoose, he probably won't say anything because neither do I ever know who he is. Um, I freaked out. I was like, you got to be kidding me because that's what I was thinking about. I was thinking about the Ezekiel Revelation 14. You think I'm, I'm messing around with you? I'm not. Oh, uh, here he is. Yes, I'm here. He started yelling about dragonflies in a good and positive way. Yeah, I was, I, I thought, I, I got a little, got a little, uh, got a little taken because I knew the direction. I wanted to bring something to you that was hopeful, but I didn't know if I should. See, that's the thing is, I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to say. I just feel kind of inspired to talk about these things. And I see as a writer, you know, because I love watching films and I love symbolism and I love reading and I love writing and I love expressing. And I know life is a big mystery and it's meant to be explored and understood through symbols, signs and symbols. Micro moon, you know, dragonflies, there's a lot of symbolism. And now it's starting to, it starts to come together for me. So he tells me about Ezekiel 1, and then that's it. That was it. That was it. I, I, I think I even got off the phone really quick. I was like, see ya, gotta go. And, um, and this is why. Let me, uh, let, me, let me pull this down a little bit. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going I'm to bring you up to speed on, um, let's go to Ezekiel for a second. Okay, if my computer allows it. Hopefully you're all having a great time and you're still doing well. He opened up to, specifically, it was Ezekiel 1, I think he said 20. Um, and then he just, he just kind of read. Which is, if you know anything about these creatures, let me see if I have a picture I can show you what the... Um, so Ezekiel, he was his, uh, he was his prophet... He wrote this book. It's called Ezekiel. <laughs> okay, and um, this is uh, this is kind of like the vision of him. He sees these living creatures, and they're described in such a way. Let's see if I'm going to pull that up. They're described in such a way that it's quite strange. But you see this description also played out in the Book of Revelation too. So these two are almost they're almost uh, connected, if you will. So the word of the Lord came expressly to Ezekiel the priest. And behold, a whirlwind came out of the north. North is very symbolic because it's up, right? A great cloud. In scripture, by now, if you watch the channel, you know that a cloud is symbolic of uh, the witness of God or the witness of truth. A great cloud of witnesses. And a fire enfolding itself. A fire enfolding itself Think about that for a second. We were just talking about the fire of Christ burning within us, fire enfolding itself, and the brightness was about it, and out of the midst there was the color of amber out of the midst of the fire. Okay. And also out of the midst there came the likeness of four living creatures, and this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. And every one had four faces, and every one had four wings. You see? This is interesting. And their feet were straight feet. Interesting. And the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot. And they sparkled in the sun, like the color of burnished brash. And they had hands of a man under their wings, on their four sides. And they had four and their faces on their wings. Okay, so let me uh, come back to this again. And let me see if I can just find a picture of the dragonfly. So you have the four wings, you got the six feet, you got the feet like hands. You got the, and you got that big head that's a big eye. Okay, now I'm not saying that the dragonfly is the, the living creatures. I'm saying that I thought of the dragonfly because of the description in Ezekiel. It sounds a lot like the body of a dragonfly. Sparkles in the light. Four wings. Feet are under the wings. Feet like hands. Straight legs. I'm just saying, this is no crazy revelation. 
and and why is this important? Hang on, let me let me go back over here, and I'll sh I'll show you why. Let me make sure that I transitioned over. Yes, I did. And their wings were joined one to another. They turned not when they went. <laughs> they went every one straight forward. They don't turn back. I don't know. You ever? Now I see. You know, once again, I'm not like insects aren't my thing. And I didn't do enough research on the dragonfly, but but I, I you know dragonflies they don't I never I've never seen them like turn I see them go up and down and back and forth and blah 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 but they go straight forward now this is symbolic okay because we're not talking about dragonflies here we're talking about a group of individuals this is highly symbolic Ezekiel probably had freaky dream and then he wrote it down because he knew that God inspired it. He knew that there was, because, you know, it's, the truth of God is hidden, and it needs to be revealed. And a lot of people say to me all the time, how did you figure this out? Who, who, who did you start? I go, I don't know. Just things just started to make sense. Revelation 14, especially when we get there, it's going to blow your mind. So, of course, I'm like, okay, I got to talk about the, uh, I got to talk about the, this thing playing out. Two chapters later, two years later, Dragonfly raises after uh, how many years? How many months? Two. On the third day, he rises. The moon is being stolen from the east. It's interesting. All of this stuff is interesting. And I beheld the living creatures, the appearance of them. They're pretty cool. They're pretty cool. And wherever the spirit was to go, they went. We're not talking about monsters here. We're talking about a bunch of people, creatures that are finally living their life. Jesus is called the way, the truth, and the light. Okay, let me come over here because now I feel like it's time for some, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop some, uh, I'm gonna drop some wisdom on you. Some wisdom, wisdom, which is, uh, the name of one of the stones that's above their heads in, uh, in this book, Wisdom. The way, the truth, and the life. Christ. It's the way, the truth, and the life was put to death at a place of the skull called Golgotha. But now there are these living creatures and where the Spirit of God goes, they go. Now, harps, right? I was thinking about harps. I was thinking about Revelation 14. So, how many years ago did I, and I, I don't know exactly how many years ago I wrote this, but let me um, let me pull up this article, and we'll be pleasant. It'll be really cool. It'll be really cool if I wrote this article two years ago. It'd be so cool. <laughs> oh God, I hope so. Hang on, let me see if I can find. Um, Got to switch over here. Okay. How's everybody doing? Is everybody doing all right? Everybody doing okay? Good. I'm glad you're doing okay. Let's get to the interlinear study Bible now. By the way, that's um, Bible Gateway which I use. It's really a great resource. Now, this is um, studylight.org. Uh, a lot of people say, hey, how do you find out about the, um, the meaning of names and stuff? How do you know about the Hebrew? How do you know about the Greek? How do you do that? Well, this resource is called um, studylight.org. You can go over here and see things, and it'll blow your mind. You know, you see, you see certain, certain things that you think are bad, I'll give you an example, because towards the end, you see, like right here, today's story is about this, Revelation 14, just the beginning, and I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads, and I heard a voice from heaven, the voice of many waters, and as a voice of great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps, and they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne, before the four beasts and elders. Now the beasts were those living creatures. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000, which were redeemed from the earth and sealed. If you go back in my videos, you'll see I, I, um, I did a show where I was like, hey, is everybody being sealed right now? Because it was like some stuff going on with sealing. It's interesting. These are those that were not defiled by limp women, blah, blah, blah. But let's get into this. Let me um, show you. So I wrote this essay, I don't know how many years ago. It was definitely a year or two ago. Let me um, 
Let me just take a look. I'm just curious. Give me a sec. Oh, come on. Now, I didn't do this. Um, this was four years ago. This is a while ago. Holy mackerel. 2015. Wow. All right, cool. So there's a picture right there. If you see that, it's kind of like they talk about the throne and these are the living creatures. And then here you have the 24 elders that are sitting around the throne of God. I have essays on this. I think it's interesting that we have 24 cranial nerves that also kind of sit around the throne of our brain. Yeah, just just interesting stuff. Okay, you want to find out? Let's let's talk about this. Let's go. So we're going to break down 14, chapter 1. St. John is describing something symbolic. Obviously, the book of Revelation is meant to be taken like a dream. The majority of the scripture is nothing more than allegories, right? It's the spirit of the story that gives life. I talk about this all the time. So that being said, the lamb we see here is clearly symbolic of Christ. Lamb is a baby sheep. It is a sacrifice. It is a symbol of casting off the old nature in man. That's why the lamb we read the lamb that we read about is slain, freshly. Notice the place where the lamb stands. It's Mount Zion, a symbol of the truth of God. This is the this is paradise. This is the height of understanding. This is that new Jerusalem, basically, in a roundabout way. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. So, these people, let's take a look, right? Let's go over here. Where are they standing? Because everybody makes it sound so super spiritual, which it does sound spiritual, right? That they're standing on Mount Zion. Mount Zion, which by the way, you want to know what Zion means? This is, let's see if it opens up for me. My computer gets slow, and then I hope that I don't start sounding like a, a robot. Okay, it's not going to work, I guess. Maybe it's just going to freeze up. Who knows? Who knows? Let's see here. Bear with me. A parched place! What's a parched place? It's lacking. It's, an, it's like I'm parched. It's lacking some water. Right? So... The world right now would be kind of like a parched place. So where would Mount Zion be? Well, according to scripture, I hope you're all with me. I hope this is not boring. Those who trust in the Lord are like that parched place, which cannot be shaken, but endure forever. Can't be shaken. So this lamb standing firm, also with the 144,000 overcomers, each had the name of the lamb, now, the word name, by the way, means nature. Literally, the nature of God was written in your minds. I write my laws in your hearts and your minds. All of a sudden, it starts to sound like, could be you, could be me. In your foremost thoughts, the nature of God. This is the remnant that stands up. Now, these are strategically placed individuals all over here. The next line is, and I heard a sound from heaven like the roar of rushing waters and a loud peal of thunder. We know that heaven is within us, right? Everybody know that? Kingdom of heaven is within you, it's in your midst. So what John is hearing, he's hearing probably, it's almost like within. It's God's word, it's the truth. In Ezekiel, here we back to Ezekiel again, 124, the sound of roar of rushing water is as the voice of God. So these people are talking, they start sounding like it's God speaking through them, which is wisdom spoken from our heart. Proverbs states, uh, a fountain of wisdom is as a rushing stream. Not to mention, according to Job, thunder announces the coming of a storm. His thunder announces the coming storm. Even the cattle makes it known. Are we paying attention? Are we paying attention? John saw a day when messengers would stand up all over the world and start to share the light of truth and in so doing draw all mankind to them and declare a new day to them. It's interesting. The sound I heard was like the harpists playing their harps. Now a harp, by the way, is symbolic of laughter and joy. These messengers, they talk quite a bit about peace and joy. Also quite a coincidence. Do we not hear today love and peace and joy being declared on channels like mine? The harps John was hearing was joy and laughter. 
Look in Isaiah. The joyful timbrels are stilled. This is what happens when there's no peace, when there's no truth of God in the land. The noise of the revelers have stopped. The joyful harp is silent. There's no joy. But John starts to hear it. I'm starting to hear it. The dragonflies got me to see it, right? All of this stuff. The moon is far, far away. Even though laughter's gone in the land and everybody's fighting with everybody to the 144,000, there's a new song that's singing before the throne of God, which, by the way, points to your temples. And before the four living creatures and the elders, no one could learn the song except those redeemed. It's interesting. So who do they represent? What does the lion and the ox and the man and the eagle represent? Well, these are all natures and man. I think we've gone pretty far for today. I think that um, I think that maybe there's some joy that you're uh, you need to start declaring. I think it's time for you maybe to fear God and to uh, return to the truth, because you know that word fear. You know what it means to take flight. Let's take a look. Let's see if I can um, see if I can show that to you. I want to show you a couple of things. I'll just uh, leave you on a kind of a good note. Let's see if I can see the word fear. Fear, 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 fear. Where are we? I also want to show you because if you follow this all the way down, so basically where we are right now, there's this new song that's being sung. They're not defiled. They're redeemed from among men. They are the first fruits of unto God and to the Lamb. The first fruits, the first small little uh, little uh, little harvest moon, little micro moon, right? Little teeny bit that are going to be um, kind of revealing the light of Christ. In their mouth is no guile. They're not going to lie to you. For, for they're without fault before the throne of God. And I saw another angel fly. And by the way, the word angel, anybody want to know what an angel is? It's just a messenger. Like a muamua. Ooh. I didn't know I was going to say that. An envoy. A scout. A messenger. The first to arrive. Now another's coming. A messenger. That's it. A scout. One who is sent from God. To preach what? The everlasting gospel. To preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue. To share the videos around with everybody. <laughs> okay? Like, subscribe, and check that bell. Saying with a loud voice, fear God. Let's click that and let's take a look. To put to flight by terrifying. Reverence. To put to flight. You either gonna you're gonna uh, play the uh, you're gonna play that harp. You're gonna be joyful and you're gonna be singing because you're seeking God and you're fearing God and you're living according to the law of God, which is very simple to follow if you really understand what love is. Give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come. That word come, erkeme. Hopefully, I didn't check. There we go. To come into being, to arise, to come forth, to show itself, to find a place of influence, to become established, to become known. Today's the day. This is the day. This is what's happening right now. There's going to be another angel that's going to be crying soon. Babylon's fallen, fallen, fallen. That great city has fallen. And because it, the moon is so, so far away. Because if you worship that beast and its image, if you continue in this rat race, do you know what the beast is, according to scripture? Carnal, ignorant man. They know not that they are brute beasts. Calculate the number of his name, 666. It is the number of a man. The beast and his image, and receive his mark in your forehead or in his hand. Forehead, your foremost thought, hand has to do with your works. If you are worshiping that, there's not going to be any peace for you. I'm telling you. But if you're fearing God and you're seeking the truth, 
You're going to be okay. You're going to be singing. You're going to be doing good. Now, this is where it gets a little spooky. I, I'm going to end on this because I want to show you something. So a lot of people, a lot of people take this beautiful passage in scripture that John wrote. They turn it into a horror show. So if people are dummies and they're going to continue to worship this stupid system and, you know, take advantage of people and lie and cheat, cancel people for saying the wrong thing. I, I sometimes do stupid things like that, right? I say bad things about people too. I make mistakes. But when I do stuff like that, there's no peace. There's never going to be any peace for those that are there. Because you'll be tormented. You know what that word tormented means? A lot of people think that word means torture. A lot of you in the chat, maybe you think that too. But that's not what it means. It actually means, it's actually pretty cool. Let's take a look at the word origin. A touchstone. Which is a black stone used to test the purity of gold. Purity of gold. By the color streak produced by rubbing it with either metal. You're going to be tested until you're found to be pure. And the smoke of your torment, right? Now, you know what fire is? Fire is good. Christ comes with a consuming fire. Brimstone, not a bad thing. Brimstone makes soap, just so you know. It makes soap. Brimstone. It's used for purity and cleansing. Because burning brimstone was regarded as having the power to purify. You think they see a lot of people, a lot of pastors. And that's why they're doing terrible things to themselves. That's why they're giving up on their faith. That's why they're checking out. God forbid. Because they don't know the truth of God. Because they've just been regurgitating the lies of the world. Satan comes like an angel of light too. But here, right before your eyes... You've been told you'll be tortured and burned. But really, you're going to be tested and tried until you're found to be pure in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of that torment is going to ascend up for ever and ever. But it doesn't mean forever. It means for an age. An unbroken age, maybe. But not in this case. A period of time. Take a look. Kind of like you're going through a hard time, right? Going through a hard time? You're going to be tormented. You're going to be tested. You're going to be tried. Unless you're fearing God. And that, my friends, is why you should. So, I don't know if the dragonflies and all that stuff, I don't know if any of that really... Um, I don't, know, you know, I don't think it should be anything that we should be scared of. I think it's something that's pretty exciting. I think that the micro moon is very, very exciting. I think that this heralds a great time. I think that, you know what? Let's just get excited. Let's start to, um, let's start to sing, you know? Let's start to dance. Let's start to enjoy each other. Let's start to love a little more. Let's start to be better. Let's stop, let's stop being so scared all the time, you know? And let's jam out to some Kevin McLeod before I get out of here. I apologize if my computer was running slow and it was sounding all weird. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm so glad you all joined me. I hope that um, you can check out that uh, essay, by the way, on my, uh, my website, if you want. Let's uh, kick the music on. And uh, share the stuff around, everybody, you know. You never know when these things are going to uh, pop off. I love each and every one of you, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>